it's crunch time. This is the last week before we leave for Ultimate Adventure. And this is just always how this happens. You know, whenever you gotta get a project done, you know, everything just kind of piles up into the end. And so that just means like, you know, long days, late nights, it's just what you gotta do. So here's where we're at right now. Uh, I'm basically trying to get all of the chassis work finished. So the axles are, are back underneath it. I got those painted. Uh, engine is obviously mounted permanently. The rear end's pretty much done. There's only one more thing I want to do to it, and that is I want to add some type of Andy wrap bar, and that's just because I got so much uh, low range in that transfer case. And then after that, I will build the exhaust, and then once the exhaust is built, then I'll go ahead and drop the body on it. I'm not going to put the body back on until everything else is done. One thing I also save until the very end, I don't finish weld or paint or anything. The pan hard bar or the drag link, uh, the tie rod is done. It's well that I'm gonna paint it tonight before I leave. Um, I don't do any of that until the vehicle is completely finished. All the weights on it, everything's in place. And that way I don't end up with one that's like too short or well, that's the worst case scenario. Too long is okay, you can cut it. But I don't wanna like build it, weld it, and then get it in there and find out I got a problem. Um, aside from that, there's no real surprises. Uh, the cab's super simple. Um, I tossed the dash back in it. Um, I've got the shifters in place. I'm not going to officially mount those until I have the uh, actual cab back on because I may have to raise those up a little bit. I'm knocking out all the wiring. Uh, the wiring on this is going to just be super bare bones because I don't really need a lot of wiring on this. Um, there's nothing fancy on this one. There's just headlights, taillights, brake lights, all that usual stuff that you'd need. Cooling fan, fuel pump, and then power for the computer. And like I said before, I'm running that factory computer, so it should be good. So right now I'm gonna work on the radiator mount uh, that goes up front, just the bottom brace. I've got it cut. I wanna show you something on it. So if you're gonna cut something on, uh, if you have a plasma table, if you're gonna cut something and then bend it, like I'm gonna do with this. So you can see here on this, there's a bend that's gonna happen right here. And instead of having to measure every time I put it in my uh, press brake, what I've done is I just add these little, little boop boops, little, it's like an eighth inch little arrow. And that way I just line that up. And then when I put it in the press brake, I don't have to spend any time with a tape measure. I just line up those little notches and then it's good to go. the winch plate made and I forgot one thing here and that is I had to push the winch uh, far enough forward uh, to clear the radiator the radiator actually sits right on this little bracket right here um, the issue I'm having is I pushed it right to this front edge with the holes and now if I put the plate on the front to mount the fair lead there's not going to be any room for the bolts to fit between the winch and that plate now you might think oh great it's garbage now i gotta completely redo it and cut a whole big new plate and throw out that big piece of steel but you don't because i'm going to show you how to fix that i can actually push the winch back i can push the winch back there's plenty of room here and i can push it back almost see if i can do this here i can push it back right to there i can push it right to there so now the problem is the holes are here and I need the hole to be back here. So what do you do in that case? Do you, once again, just drill the holes out and leave those old holes there? Well, that's not very good because that hole actually weakens that plate. Um, but there is a way, there is a way, I promise you, to fix this and make it stronger at the same time. And it's kind of cool and I'm going to do it all at the plasma table. So what I did here to fix this uh, issue is actually pretty simple. Put my glove on, it's all still hot. There you go. So what I did here to fix this is I actually just dropped this block back on the plasma table and just recut these holes. I just let it go through the first four steps of the cut and then stop the cut. And this is where I want the holes to be pushing that winch back. 
but I don't want to just leave these empty holes here for two reasons. Number one, looks ugly. Number two is the shear load on this panel is this way. So when you're pulling on a winch, you're basically trying to rip the bolts through this piece of steel right here. And if I had to leave this gap here, there's a chance that there, there's a slim chance that what could happen is when you get a big load on this, this is all that's holding it, this tiny little piece. So you don't want that. So what I did is I actually just went ahead and cut a strip with a hole set for the winch. They're basically gonna drop down over top the original holes, just like that. They're gonna cover up the hole, the mistake hole, so you can't see them. I'll weld this in. This will do two things. Number one, covers up my mistake. You don't get to see it anymore. Number two, I've actually made this panel a lot stronger because now I've doubled the thickness of this piece of material. And so now the shear load on this going this way is actually a lot stronger because now it's gotta rip through both pieces of steel. So it's a happy accident because now not only is this going to be stronger, but it's also going to cover up my mistake. Secrets! So as you can see now, uh, the winch plate's all fixed. I now have holes where I want them. Uh, the old holes actually plug welded this side. And I now have on the back side this extra stiffening rib to make it uh, a little bit stronger. I added these braces. They'll actually go down and weld on the bottom of the frame. And then what I'm working on is these uprights for the bumper. If you remember, I made these before just out of some uh, flat stock and then just basically uh, welded them all together and then um, to make them look a lot thicker than they actually are. I went ahead and just ran like a real messy fat extra bead down here with a whole lot of extra filler wire on it just so I could uh, w grind it flat and smooth like that. And to do that, I'm using a uh, sander that I got recently from Ameribraid. Now this thing is bad ass because what you can do with it is you can use it to notch tubing if you want, or you see this a lot in like knife making stuff. Um, I've been jonesing after one of these for a while. This thing is pretty awesome because it does these grinds so fast. I got this big 36 grit belt. It's got an adjustable speed control on it. Uh, I can actually use it to notch tubing. I can swap out this uh, flat piece for a piece that holds these little rollers and then I can use it to notch uh, tubing as well. But right now I'm just gonna use it to finish out this piece.
now you can see what the whole front bumper kind of looks like. I am still going to add tubes out the end of this, but I'm going to wait until the sheet metal goes on. But basically, I've got these uh, little kickers. If you remember, I made these and then ground them all smooth so they look good. And those kick up. I just got a piece of 120 wall DOM coming across there. It's all welded in here. It's also gusseted underneath. The winch fits in really well. The radiator fits in really well. This is going to be the world's smallest lower radiator hose ever in the history of any vehicle I've ever built. I'm going to do an electric fan on the inside of this. I'm going to work on that a little bit later. I think right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back and knock out uh, the anti-wrap bar for the back of this rig. So I've done this with a few of these anti-wrap bars. What I end up doing is basically tying into the actual pinion guard on the axle. And what that does for me is it kind of turns the anti-wrap bar almost into like a little skid plate for the drive shaft as well. Uh, I'll still have a piece that comes off the top of this bar and just comes back here. I'll put a couple tabs on top of the axle. I don't want to go too tall. Uh, I don't want to go any higher than that because of my spare tire being up here. But that's, uh, that's the start of our anti-wrap bar. And that'll be the end of the fab for this. And then we can actually drop the body back on finally. Basically what I'm trying to do is finish up everything on this Colorado chassis. And that way I can just drop the body on. I just have a couple things left to do. It's just going to be a lot easier to work on it without the body on it. So got the anti-wrap bar done. It's painted. It's almost ready to go back in. Uh, finished up all the belly pan bracing. That's all finished up in there now. Um, I've done the brake lines, got the flex line mounts in place. I may even go ahead and run the hard lines. I'm not sure. I may have to run out tonight and pick them up. But I'd like to put the cab on tonight. So they just may wait until tomorrow. Um, and right now I'm working on the exhaust. Exhaust is super simple. Uh, normally, you, you would think to run the exhaust out the other side without the drive shaft on it, but this is full stuff right now. This is fully compressed. And I actually have enough space here to get the exhaust out of here above this drive shaft and underneath the transfer case on that side. It actually makes it a lot easier because this side has a three link mount on it. And I was worried about squeezing an exhaust pipe through this space right here. So it's just a simple two into one. And that's going to go back into a MagnaFlow muffler. When I'm building exhaust like that, simply what I do is I basically just put all the pieces together underneath the truck, tack them in place, and then pull them out on the bench uh, to fully weld it. Um, and that just makes life a lot simpler, just working on the bench to fully weld it. I just got to weld these pieces together, and then it's done. I'm going to clock this piece uh, right here because I'm worried the O2 sensor is basically coming out right the floor. So I'm going to cut the tacks, turn this. But it shouldn't be a big deal because the flange is clockable on that manifold. And then I just weld it up. I'm going to trim a little bit off here. And then what I actually do is I'm going to weld. This is the crossover where the crossover pipe comes in. I'm going to fully weld this. Then I'm going to go into the hole saw afterwards and cut the hole. It just makes it a lot easier to weld it that way. If you try to cut the hole and then weld it, you always end up just welding on two pieces of edge material and you end up blowing through almost every single time. This just makes things a lot simpler. Oh. There we go. Dirty on the inside, too. Night and day difference. Oh, sometimes it helps to clean the helmet, makes it easier to see. What the chances? Oh, look at the difference.